Hello and welcome. We're going to solve this problem together because we couldn't fit it on the screen entirely. Uh, but feel free to pause it at different times because although we can work on it together, you certainly don't need me to solve it. All right, so it says graph f of x equals x squared and g of x equals 2 to the x power. So we have a quadratic or parabola, right? And we have an exponential function as well. So we should think about really quickly um, what the general shape of quadratic and exponential look like. I'll, I'll sketch that over here. So our q for quadratic, that's going to be some kind of parabola, right? And e for exponential, if it's a growth exponential, you'll see something like this. That's for growth, if it's increasing in value. And for decay, that means we're losing value, it's something like this. So we should think about the general shape before we get to specifics. Now here in this graph, we're going uh, for the x values where x is greater than or equal to zero. And you can see in this graph down here that they kind of cut it off so x is only positive. So I'm gonna write, sorry, I'm gonna point out that there's two ways that I would go about doing this. One is to make a table for each function. And I'm just gonna notice, look at the x values here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So that means our domain, that means the domain, the, so when we write this out, that means our domain is one through 10, those are our x values. And our table, we might cover all those x values, or just some of them. I'll just cover some of them, I'm feeling a little bit lazy. Uh, so we've got x and f of x and g of x. Let's plug in one, two, and we'll try to plug in, I don't know, um, well, I guess three and four. So I'm just plugging in some simple x values to each function. f of x is x squared, so one squared is one, two squared is four, then nine and 16. Two to the x power, well, <clears throat> two to the first equals two, two to the second equals four, uh, two to the third equals eight, and two to the fourth equals 16. So we can now turn this table into a graph. Uh, I'm gonna color code from this point on, g of x will be blue, and f of x will be red. So g of x, our height's here, one, two, four, uh, six, eight, and 10, uh, 12, and sorry, 14, and 16, 18, and 20. I just want to go through across the full range. Remember, domain is the x values, range is the y values. And our x values are 1, 2, 3, 4. The y values for our points are 2, 4, 8, 16. So we plot 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 4, here, 3, 8. See, it's getting steeper, that nice exponential growth. And 4, 16, so here. So here's our exponential function. All right? And now let's do the quadratic. One, 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 here. Two, four, here. The points are equal at that point. Three, nine. The last point is four, 16, which is right here. So this graphs meet again. Now, I want to, before I sketch this, I want to know what's going to happen for 5, which is going to be larger. So if I plug in 5 for f of x, it's x squared 25, but g of x is 2 to the 5th, which is 16 double, or 32. So g of x is surpassing f of x at this point, 5 over here. So when I sketch that, I want to kind of represent that. I also start at 0, too, because if I plug in 0 to f of x, I get uh, x 0 squared, which is 0. Um, and then 2 to the 0 is 1. So this point, actually, I can do a better sketch for the exponential. Sorry, it should come down to the point 0, 1, because 2 to the, two to the 0 is just 1. And this one goes on to 0, 0, but up here, it's going to slowly, it's going to, sorry, uh, grow at a slower rate than the exponential. It's very hard to sketch these out freehand. I'm trying to represent that. And the blue line, you might even make a little bit steeper, because the height of the blue is going to uh, exceed the height of the red line at five. And in fact, I'm having a hard time with this. You can't tell on this graph. You know, five should reach all the way to 25. So, got this here. They're both, you can't really tell which one's which. So what you might do is, uh, sorry, label some key points, like 
three, nine, and then four, sixteen. You might label a couple of these points so they know uh, you understand what's happening on the graph. We've got three, eight for the g of x. We've got two, four for both g of x and f of x here. Label those points. Um, now we know that g of x is going to uh, have a higher value, a uh, higher height than f of x. Uh, once x reaches five, you can see that g of x is higher than f of x. So we can say that down here. Uh, I'll say it this way. g of x has a greater value than f of x when x equals 20. Even before I get to I know at 5, g of x already, is already has a higher value. But I can plug it in. Why? Because g of 20 equals 2 to the 20th. And if you plug that into your calculator, right, 2, oops, put this screen, 2 to the 20th is over, uh, we have over a million here, right? It's 1,048,576. But f of 20 is just um, 20 squared, which is only 400. You can see that g of 20 is way larger, even though on our graph here we can't really tell which one's which. Sorry about that. Uh, they kind of cut us off there in the interval. We can see that g of x is actually larger in the end. So the only thing you might do to fix, the, uh, fix your graph, again, label, be clear about it. Um, you can even draw arrows like this, f of x equals x squared, and you can say here this is g of x, oh boy, I got it backwards. F of, f of x is this one down here, that's x squared, and g of x is this one, which is 2 to the x, just to show them that you know which graph is which, even if, like, like if yours is as messy as mine, as long as you label, uh, they will give you the credit. Thanks.